if developer self-service is go to operations and beg for infrastructure, you, you know, they're gonna, what's going to happen is there's going to be other providers. They're going to go straight to Amazon. You know, they'll, they'll find some VP that will say, you know what, I'm going to let you break the rules. I'm going to let you open up your own Amazon account or the org will have one. And we will let you do developer self-service because, you know, for me to say I'm building an app, like right now I'm building something that has to take in webhooks uh, from an external party. If I have to wait a month before I can stand up a service that allows me to take in that ingress and, and not use an external, you know, system I already have where I can expose that kind of uh, endpoint, I'm going to either I'm going to just wait a month and not be very productive or I'm going to go ahead and just use my self-service platform to stand that up. Or if I don't do that, I'm probably going to create this kind of shadow cloud, if you will, account and, and just do whatever I can to be productive, even if it's outside of policy. And I hate to inform all the sizers out there, but like the more barriers you put <laughs> to people being able to do this, um, you actually create security holes by you know, people just kind of create their own. Uh, on the outside that are maybe outside of control. And, and that's, you know, that's a tough situation. Like whether it needs to exist or not isn't a question. Um, you know, everybody I know, I, I have friends across all the major tech companies, uh, you know, everywhere from Amazon and Netflix to Apple, to, you know, Salesforce, all of them. All of them are building an internal developer platform. This is, um, you know, I think any company that wants to be seen as a tech forward company or as a tech company at all, which is just about every company on the planet right now that's you know, trying to participate in this you know, kind of new world, has to do that. So you have to think, well, why wouldn't we do it? Um, you, you know, what, are, are there special reasons why we wouldn't want to empower people to uh, create services in the way that they need to create them? And what happens if we don't do it, what happens is you just end up slowing the organization down. So it, like, like the whole why part is, is almost like, it's obvious. Like, like you, you need something if you are a technology company. Is it self-service? Yes, if you are a technology company. Otherwise you get the shadow IT. If it takes, you know, four months to be able to stand up an idea and test it with real customers, it is your cycle time is just too long to compete in our industry. So yeah, you have to have one of these. And I think what will ultimately happen when developers have this kind of ability to, you know, be able to build a new service, be able to test the idea, be able to uh, take it in front of customers is you get more engaged engineers. You get engineers that feel like they're actually inventing things, moving the world forward. And I think that actually does things for lowering attrition because when people feel engaged and empowered, they, don't leave their jobs. They, they love their jobs and they feel like they will have the impact on the world that they joined your company to create. Humanitech is bringing to bear all the good ideas about what an internal developer platform can be and making it so that people in all the different companies that aren't going to be the big tech companies can implement one without having to recreate the wheel. It pains me that I've heard of you know dozens of companies doing this and not sharing their efforts. And I, I lived this you know back in the day at Salesforce. We had several independent efforts like this. It was new then, so you know, there's some good reasons for that. But a lot of these patterns are becoming more well established. And I think for the industry not to have a SaaS offering that they can leverage so that they're, you know, the whole can be more than the sum of its parts. This is why when I found out Humanitech exists, that I started just calling whoever, I, you know, reaching out to whoever I could reach out to, to try to support this story. Um, you, you know, when I, I'm passionate about this, I'm passionate about software engineers and I want them to be empowered. I want them to have the self-service. I want them to be able to invent things. I want product leaders to be able to invent things at their company. And it starts at being able to have these kinds of platforms that shorten that path. Um, Humantic is converging on a pattern that we've seen with Backstage.io, a very, really good open source project in the same capacity, growing very, very, very quickly. Um, I think having a well-supported option, uh, I think this is a, an entirely useful thing for a company to offer the market and hopefully 
you know, be able to kind of take the learnings that, you know, from me and others similarly situated and build a better offering that evolves and makes the story even better over time. I love what Stripe does, for example, uh, as a company where they've built APIs where you can literally call an API and get a company incorporated. Um, and they're a good example of one of many, many companies that are building these very, very uh, new you know, products and services that are likely to make a lot of incumbent services obsolete. So it's kind of a story about, do you want to be a technology company or not? If you're going to be a technology company, uh, you're going to need a developer platform in order to achieve that. Now, one of the other ways I've seen it done um, that might be, you know, if I were going to argue in good faith, I would say, you know, maybe Amazon or some of the cloud providers provide a good enough developer platform if you just use their services as is. Okay, that's a reasonable alternative. I think I would caution you though to say, you know, it is not in their interest to make it easy for you to be able to move workloads around different cloud providers. And I've seen many organizations get stuck in the trap of having a large commitment to one cloud provider, uh, having them, you know, and having the pricing be much higher than they expect, but they're locked into long-term contracts. Uh, I think sometimes that will have an effect on the economics of an organization that you probably didn't intend. And that some, at some point your unit economics uh, start to suffer uh, as a consequence. So just be wary of that. I think having an internal developer platform, particularly one independent of cloud providers is uh, incredible to be able to have leverage or even the ability, not just from a cost standpoint, but there will be some clouds that have better offerings than others in some specific capabilities. Like I love Google Spanner as a database technology. Um, you know, I don't want to not be able to use that um, for certain kinds of use cases. Even if I've, I'm doing most of my stuff on one of the other major uh, platforms. I think service ownership is a good idea in theory. I think in practice, people got confused between service ownership and I have to run all the ops for my service and not have any economy of scale where if I'm running a thousand different services that run Kubernetes, I shouldn't have to have a thousand Kubernetes experts to do that. Uh, and so there, there is a, a nuanced argument where at some level of scale, probably having a centralized platform team that handles the parts of Kubernetes that aren't unique to each service is helpful so that you still are running, you're still responsible for your service. You're still responsible for working with that central team that might be managing Kubernetes to make sure you're using it the right way. Um, for the same reason that, you know, you're not, you're not running Amazon's services either. <laughs> Even if you have a Kubernetes team running on top of Amazon, you're not doing their job. Their team can do their job. You can focus as a service owner on the part that matters, right? Not how many errors did we have because a container didn't scale. How many errors did we have because a customer logic error didn't allow me to show the product on the product page for a good reason. Uh, the kinds of things I want to use my observability system to, to manage aren't, did the network work? That's not a good use of my time as a engineering leader unless I'm building networking products. I want to focus on, did my app work? Did my logic do what it's supposed to do? All those, you know, did my algorithm process the thing efficiently? All those things that are unique to my product or service are the things that as a service owner, I should care about. As it relates to how the infrastructure works, Absolutely, you need to know if you are doing if you're building a service that has to scale on a uh, on a holiday or something like like on a shopping holiday. You absolutely need to know like how do you tell Kubernetes to scale you when you get that signal that you are going to have more usage. Okay, you still need to know some of those things, but it's one thing to know it. It's another thing to support every aspect of it and be an expert. And I think we have to draw a difference between those two uh, concepts. Enable your engineers, your technology organization to build new products and services that are useful to your company and spend less time having all your different technology folks in your org build infrastructure. Your company doesn't sell infrastructure. They sell a product. Now, your company might sell infrastructure. If you do that, okay, that's fine. But most of you don't. Most of you sell computers or shoes or clothes or food or something that isn't infrastructure. If you sell one of those other things, you should use an internal developer platform 
so that you don't have to spend a lot of your time and energy worrying about that stuff. Um, because nobody buys your product because it runs on Kubernetes. Doesn't happen. <laughs> Unless you are a Kubernetes provider, it's not relevant to your product. 